y'all so i am back with another reaction video this one is from a young lady named terry forever i will link her youtube um as well as the video in the description box below um this is a blind reaction i found her video on youtube literally by searching um la hairstylists like horror stories and stuff like that um i do get a lot of people that come to me as transplants from out of town. I'm not sure if this young lady is. We'll find out um, in the video. But I do get a lot of transplants that come from out of town. And I do hear a lot about what they go through. Um, what they've dealt with before they've come to me. How hard it was finding somebody before me. Etc. Etc. And so um, this is going to be like my reaction slash commentary in my two cents. Um, I want to say that I do not know this young lady. I am subscribed to her, but I do not know this young lady. Um, and I obviously, because she doesn't have the stylist tag, I can't say that I know that the that know the stylist that she's speaking on either. So um, I want y'all to come watch this with me. Get you. <laughs> it's only four four twenty five here, but get you something to drink or what have you, and um, let's get into it. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Terry, and today I am back with another YouTube video. So if cute. you are a new viewer to my channel, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Yes, and make sure you turn on your post notifications so you can know when I post. And if you are a returning viewer, what's good? If you guys are new to my channel, I primarily create fashion content. However, I today I am going to be doing something him. different, you guys. I am going to be doing a story time. And part of the reason why I'm doing this story time is because I do want to do content for you guys so that you guys could kind of know more about me and just get a feel for my personality because I really want to start building a relationship with my subscribers. And then the last part is because I have been seeing so many videos on TikTok about this hairstylist tried me, this nail tech tried me, mm -hmm. this one scammed me, this and this and that. Mm -hmm. So I said, hmm, I had a couple of times when my sleeve was, I had done got tried and I need to talk my stuff. So okay, so I'm, I'm sure she'll tell it somewhere, but I want to know where she's from because I know she's not from LA. She don't sound like us. She don't have our accent. And she said, I done got tried. <laughs> it's given like Texas maybe, especially the way like she says y'all. I don't know, but she is super adorable. She's adorable. I decided to record my own personal experience that I had with a hairstylist in LA because it was just the worst y'all but anyways i am getting ready to go as you guys can see i'm all dressed up but i was like let me sit down and record this video so without further ado y'all let's just get right into this video i am not gonna waste any more time so this story time is basically about how this hairstylist tried me she didn't scan me she didn't do none of that she just straight up tried me and i wasn't here for it and it was just one of the most stressful situations that I had with a hairstylist because if you guys don't know I primarily do my own hair so I don't run into these type of issues and the one time that I decided to let somebody else do my hair this bitch tried me y'all but don't y'all hate that like I know I could do my own but don't y'all hate that like the one time I'm trying to get pampered and do something for me so that I don't have to physically do something for me like you ruin it type situation like place <laughs> so i moved to la about four and a half maybe going on five years now and since i have been living here i have done my own hair y'all i don't let nobody else do my hair just because la is really expensive and i also yep. know how to do my own hair so i don't see the point in me paying somebody all of that money when i already know how to do it sense. myself and i primarily wear wigs anyway but this was my 23rd birthday, and I was like, you know what? I want some Fulani braids, because the little Fulani braids was going crazy. So I was like, I want me some Fulani braids with the plaits in the back. So I was like, I, I can't do that. I ain't go now. I know what I could do and I can't do. And I knew I couldn't do no Fulani braids. So I was like, I'm gonna get some Fulani braids. Um, so let me find a stylist. Mind y'all, this was my first time going 
outside of the U.S. So for context, I was going to Mexico, Tulum for my birthday, and I know that we were going to be getting in water and we're like probably sweating right. and it was yeah. just going to be hot. So I was like, let me get some braids. So I'm excited, y'all. The last thing I'm trying to worry about is my hairstylist canceling on me. But yeah. whatever, y'all. I did the typical Instagram search that most girls do, uh, LA stylist, LA Fulani, like all of that stuff, you know, you, you do all these little hashtag searches so you could get the good stylist, and then you start looking at the recommendation people and clicking to their page, I was doing all that, and I found a good five people, and I DM'd them, and this girl was included in those five people. Um, I believe I actually text her. Let me check. I got my okay, phone here because I don't want to tell no, no lies or no false maybe truth. With the receipt, so let me just stroll up. <clears throat> so I text her, y'all, June 28th, okay? June 28th, I text this lady. My birthday is July 24th. So that is about... Not me, like, trying to figure out who it is based on the background. <laughs> Three to four weeks in advance, I scheduled this appointment with this girl. So I text everybody, and she responded, and I... I I texted her a, pay, a hairstyle from her page, and I was like, hi, love, how are you? My name is Terry. I wanted to reach out to you to get the pricing for this style with a cute little double pink heart. So your girl said hi. I asked her how is she. I introduced myself, and then I asked for the price. So no rudeness. Nobody could say I was being rude or whatever. Okay, so let me just say this. As a stylist, Terry girl, I really appreciate it. I appreciate the way that you sent the text message. Um, I know that sometimes that clients have a hard time or they feel intimidated when they reach out. They don't really necessarily know, like, am I saying the right things? Am I going to rub her the wrong way? I don't want to offend her. Yada, yada, yada. And it's funny because my biggest pet peeve is when people just send something and go, how much you charge? Like, how about hello? <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> and so I feel like on both ends, it sets the tone for the message. I'm praying that she don't get to where she's like, oh, this person was being rude to her. But I kind of feel it coming because she said, like, I came in the gate, like, really polite, really nice. And then she put the little two hearts on the end, which is like, really like, hey, be nice to me. <laughs> she said, hey, good evening. $180 in a $30 deposit. I didn't respond yet because like I had told you guys, I DM five people. So I was vetting my options as I should because I'm a paying customer and I need to make sure I'm getting the best rate for the best price. So I did not respond. So she texted me the next day at 8.54 in the morning with a question mark. So I'm like, oh. I hate that. I cannot, that is one of my biggest pet peeves. And honestly, between me and y'all, like, if sis would have had a booking site, she wouldn't have had to go through all of this. You know what I mean? And it's like, are you are you thirsty for, like, to be booked? Because why are you sending question marks? You should be busy enough to where you shouldn't even have to send no question mark. It's, you, go for, you should be so busy, you forget that she texts you until she texts you back again. Like, she on her stuff. To me, I'm feeling like she seems like she's on top of things and all of that. No, see, so I, I can trust, that like, this girl. So, so she res she responded with a question mark. And I'm going to try to put everything here. I'm not going to promise it, but I'm going to try to put the messages here. So, I said, hi, so sorry for my delay in response. I have been trying to figure out exactly what I want. What about a style like this? Because that was another reason. I wasn't Very sure cute. exactly what I wanted. I was like... 50-50 on getting Fulani braids in the front with the plaques in the back or Fulani braids in the front with the sewing in the back. So I didn't know exactly what I wanted and I was still just texting multiple different people. And I said, also, I was looking for an appointment on July 20th. Do you happen to have that date available? She said, hey, love, it's okay. I could put you down for the 20th and this style will be $250. So I'm like... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, so... When you guys, by the time you guys see this video, I am going to um, X out the name because it does show the name in the text messages. Um, so that will be blocked out just because now I know who this is. Um, what I will say is that this particular individual 
has had issues with clients before. So, Terry girl, this is not an LA thing. This is a her thing. She does this to everybody. Like, she does this to LA clients as well. Um, she just went viral not too long ago for running off on on somebody's um, appointment. Like she she pretty much canceled the appointment. Well, she didn't even cancel the appointment. She flaked on the client and then proceeded to like berate the client for reaching out like publicly about the situation. So I'm gonna like now that I see it, I'm gonna that's gonna get blocked out before I, I upload this. But yeah, it all makes sense now. It all makes sense. Okay, cool. I said thank you so much with the heart again. Where should I send a deposit to? Also, what type of hair would I need and how many pets? So basically, y'all, I decided to go with this girl because... I'm like, you know, she seemed committed. She responded to me. When I didn't respond, she put the question mark. So she really dedicated to the job. Okay, some of you beautiful Southern Bells, y'all have got to stop taking... Um, how do I say this? I get what you're getting at, but like here in our city, that's aggression. She she wasn't being like on top of things. She was just being aggressive. It was more so on some like, okay, so do you want this appointment or are you wasting my time? It wasn't like a, hey, I really want to work with you because you're not going to send nobody a question mark. You're, you're not even, okay, let me keep going. I ain't gonna have no issues with her responding or none of that. So I'm like, what can I send the send a deposit to? Give me all the details, baby. So she said, you're welcome with the little kissy face. Please send twenty five dollars via Cash App to whatever name or Apple Pay. I said, sending it now. Also, what type of hair would I need and how many pets? And oh, and also the times you have available. So I'm trying to get all the details because I need the details before I just send my money. So I need to know. I've heard people say stylists, they want them to bring the comb, the edge control, the gel. Mm -hmm. all. So I'm trying to get all of the details and see what exactly I need to bring before I send this girl my money. So um now we're on june 30th so about two days from the initial text that i texted her she said good morning i have a 9 a.m open for the 20th yes i will tell you everything to bring plus the address once you the your deposit is sent so i'm like oh so you can't tell me how many packs of hair i need before i send so i can understand um the address because you know maybe this person um, I don't know, um, I don't know based on the timeline whether this young lady was working at home or was still in a salon. Um, even in salons, you know, people get weird, people, you know, people will just pop up on you, like, oh, I had a question he wasn't answering. So I get not giving the address, but I'm not going to tell you what stuff to bring until you pay the deposit. Okay, so if you had a booking site and all that stuff was listed, this young lady wouldn't have to ask. I'm going to call that a red flag, but I'm going to say that, like, she seems so sweet that I don't want to say that she's naive because maybe where she comes from, people are a lot nicer. But I will say that uh, there already from the jump was a lot of red flags that I felt like sis might have missed. Deposit. What if I decide that, you know, you're not the best option for me because I don't want to bring... Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just so many things. Like, what if you tell me I need to bring edge control to my appointment? I don't believe in having to bring all the products besides the hair to my appointment. So if I ever schedule with somebody. I don't even make my clients bring hair. I include the hair. It just makes life easier. That way I know that I have enough hair. I know that I'm using the braid hair that I like to use. Some clients, you may tell them, like, I use this brand. And they, that might not be something they want to pay for. So it's just better to include it all. It just kind of saves the headache. But I, I totally agree with her. Like, requiring your clients to bring product is a little odd. I feel like that should come with the price of the service. Told me that I needed to bring the edge control stuff. I wasn't having it. But she wasn't telling me what I needed. So, I was like, whatever. Like, I'm just, I'm over it. So... I was like, good morning, love. I completely understand. I was asking this question because I'm currently budgeting this for um, budgeting as this is for my birthday. And I have a lot of other expenses I have. Not trying to be complicated, but I have, I have had others tell me I need to supply the edge control, grease, comb, hair, etc. for the appointment. So I was just trying to see what I need to bring um, in total to make sure the totality of the hairstyles in my budget. I hope you can understand. So that... 
Um, as a st as a client, you shouldn't even be doing all of that explaining. Like, I know you do your own hair, and that's cool. I don't know if you do other people's hair, but you don't owe nobody an explanation as to why you want to know. And it's kind of crazy that you have to do that such long of a list. Like, I can understand if a person says, like, if you ask them, like, oh, well, what do you use for your ponytails? And somebody doesn't want to tell that. That's one thing. But if the if the stylist is requiring certain products to be bought to be brought for your appointment, it's a little weird for them to be like, oh, I ain't gonna tell you till you pay me. So for me, I feel like um, I could I could see, and this is not to victim shame or blame, because I mean no harm when I say this, but I could totally see like um, why with this particular individual you ran into what you ran into because some people take kindness for weakness. Like you didn't have to you you didn't have to send no explanation. Like you know that nobody needs to know that you're budgeting for your birthday. That ain't nobody business with yours. You know just. Hey, I just wanted to know because in the past, um, I've, I've booked appointments and then people require me to, be, to bring more than I'm able or willing to. Or just, you know, I'm actually just looking for a stylist that only requires me to bring the braid hair. So do you require me to bring other products? Boom, period, point blank. Like, I think it's a little weird for somebody to be like, yeah, you owe me $25 before I tell you what, what, what supplies you need to bring. And, oh, and another thing, before I forget, if a stylist is asking you to cash up your deposit, please understand that that is a red flag. We're all adults. We all have booking sites and things like that. Um, deposits should be paid through the booking sites. The reason why I say that is because a lot of these stylists that people get scammed by usually only um, accept deposits like through uh, Zelle, Apple Pay, or Cash App. And all of these are what are considered customer-initiated transactions, meaning that it's very difficult for you to get your money back when these people try to get over on you. I had a little grammatical errors in there, but y'all, I'm really big on like budgeting my money correctly um, and just setting budgets for everything I do. So like I said, this is my first time going out the country, um, even though it was to Mexico, I just wanted to make sure I was budgeting everything correctly because I also knew that I didn't want to spend more than the money that I had budgeted for this trip. So that's what I was explaining to her. Like, I need to make sure all of what you're going to ask me for is within my budget. And if it's not, let me know so I know not to book with you. So that's what I explained mm -hmm. to her. And she said, okay, no worries. Please bring six to seven packs of Rasta Silk pre-stretch and instant control. So there goes, you see what I'm saying? She done asked me to bring the control stuff, the, the edge control stuff. So like I said, I would never schedule with somebody that told me to bring like the products because I feel like as a stylist, you should have those things. But you know, I was, this time I was just like, you know, she has really neat words. She seems like she's pretty professional and on time with her responses. So whatever, Terry, just get the little, uh, whatever it is. I think it was like $15.99 edge control stuff that she asked for. But I was really pissed about that. I'm not even gonna lie. Cause I was like, I shouldn't be having to pay for this. Like you should pay for this. Like why am I paying for this? But I, I paid for it. She sent me the pictures that I need. And then she said she would provide the curly ends because I was getting the braids in the back for like with the curls in it. So I'm like, okay, thank you so much. Just sent. So I sent her the deposit. She said, okay, got it. And she sent me the address, y'all. Okay. So I'm like, okay, cool. Everything is going smoothly. And, you know, I ain't got nothing to worry about. July 11th came, y'all. And I, like, I was getting a little antsy and anticipating my uh, hair appointment because, number one, like I said, this is my first time getting my hair done in L.A. So I was really excited to finally to be able to sit in somebody else's chair for once and just be uh, pampered yeah, while I could be texting on my phone and not having to do anything yes, with my hair. I, so I, I was just trying to make sure everything was perfect. So I text, I said, hey, how are you? I hope you're having a good day. Anytime I text anybody, y'all, I make sure I start off with saying hi and how are you. Just so because sweet. I'm a respectful person that. and I understand what it is to be like having a business and people just come up and be like, oh, they ask you a question without greeting yes, you. you know? So I, I didn't always start that. that way. So I said, quick question. I wanted to know if you had uh, had a time frame for how long my appointment would take. I know we scheduled for 9 a.m. I was trying to see if I would have time to schedule my nail appointment for this day around 6 p.m. So she said five to six hours and I said thank you because I like to get my stuff done like a day mm -hmm. or two before yeah. my trip. Like I don't go 
past two days. I don't want it done three, four days before. So if I can get everything done in the same day, that's what I'm going to do. I know y'all might say that's a bit risky and I should do one on each day, but that's how I am. I Especially if I'm going to the appointment at 9 a.m. In, in the morning, there should not be no reason why I can't schedule something for six it. or seven Absolutely. at night. Like you don't need more than six, seven hours to do this hairstyle. Right. So I asked her about that. And she, she gave me how long, and I said, thank you. Now, we at July 19th, and I got to ask another question, y'all, because like I said, I'm anticipating, and I'm waiting for this, and I'm ready. And she says, and I said, hey, love, I hope you're having a great day. I wanted to ask you one more question before my appointment tomorrow. Do you mind if I perm my edges in the front because I want some really cute baby hairs, LOL. You know, trying to make a little joke or whatever, but telling her, like, girl, I need these edges to be slipped to the guy. I don't need no excuses why you can't slick my hair. I know I got 4C hair, so do you mind like because you know all these stylists now have all these crazy rules and i've never been to a stylist in, like in four or five years so i'm just trying to make sure i meet all the criterias guidelines and i don't do nothing what it while walking in there like, oh, i can't do your hair because you perm your edges so i asked her she said hey love it's all up to you i'm not responsible for any hair loss or breakage i said okay thank you gotta thank you like cool i'm perming my edges okay because i wanted to be slick okay so <laughs> I'm wearing my edges, and now, y'all, it's finally the 20th, the day that I'm getting my Fulani braids, right? Right? I'm getting my hair done today, right? No, I'm not. Anyways, so I said good morning at 8.55 a.m., y'all, because my appointment was at 9, so your girl was five minutes early because I don't need nobody trying to charge me no late So I said good morning. I am outside. She said good morning. Okay, pull it up shortly. Y'all, remember this, anything, baby. pulling up shortly. Mm. She responded at 9.07, y'all. So that's already about seven minutes 15 you, yeah. minutes after I done told her that I'm outside. So yep. she late. I'm not even yep. late. And I'm standing outside, y'all. Let me give y'all some context. This place was like in, this, her address was like in Compton or something like that. I don't hang out in Compton. I don't have nothing against Compton, but your girl sticks to the downtowns LA, the Hollywood, all of the tourist places because I'm not from LA. I don't know the hoods. I don't know where I belong and where I don't belong. So I had never been in Compton before, like by myself and just out on the street. This lady had me standing on the street for <laughs> up until this point of the story, 15 minutes between her response and it's hot as hell outside and all you hear is ambulances and fire trucks passing by, polices. I'm like, okay, whatever. Was it Cor Compton or Torrance? It's one of them hoods. That's a, I, that Torrance is not a hood. <laughs> let me just say that. I live in Torrance. It's giving very much bougie. Might have been Compton, but let me say, Compton don't have like all bad areas, but I totally understand as a transplant. This is why I be telling y'all like, um, a lot of people that complain about L.A., they complain about influencer, what we call influencer L.A., which is like the downtowns of Hollywoods and stuff like that. So I kind of feel bad that, like, um, she decided to go to somebody that was different and she had, like, the typical, like, hairstylist in the hood experience is what it's seeming like. Um, but I will say, like, you just standing outside waiting on somebody, like, the minute that you would have opened your mouth and said, oh, I'm waiting on my hairstylist, the minute that somebody would have heard you speak, we would have known that you were not from here. Nobody would have really done anything to you. But I do understand, like, your concern. But, yeah, Torrance ain't the hood, girl. Torrance is bougie. Compton is, is depending on certain areas, is the hood. Like, Compton really, like, there's... There's a lot of, it gets a bad rap, but there is a lot of, like, well-to-do black people there. And there's a lot of Mexicans. Most people are working people. They're not really, it's too goddamn expensive here for people to be trying people like that. So, you you probably was safer outside than you were hurt inside from the looks of where this is going. But you can tell I don't go to those neighborhoods because I don't even remember which one it was. But anyways, <laughs> she said... I mean, she said pulling up shortly, y'all. It's now 9.28. She told me at 9.07 that she was pulling up shortly. 9.28 passed, so that's another about 20 minutes. She's still not here. So I text her and I said, hey, I'm going back to sit in my car because I have been standing outside. Can you let me know when you get here? She did not respond. <laughs> y'all, you would think I'm lying. Homegirl just told me 20 minutes ago that she was pulling up shortly. Like, what? So then I said, um, 
ass. So now I didn't hear back from her. It's 9.53, y'all. So now, about 45 minutes after she said pulling up, I said, hey, are you still coming with the face that look like this? Listen, before, because I already know where this is going. I wouldn't have stood out there that long. I'm sorry. And especially the, because you could do your own hair. Like, I know you don't want to. I probably would have cried in the car. But 45 minutes with no response is crazy. Standing outside in an area that I don't know is crazy. Being in an area where I'm not from and standing outside is crazy. Like, <laughs> I would have left. Especially seeing as though you could braid your own hair. I get it. You wanted a certain design. But listen, if box braids is your jam and you knew that you could hook up some box braids with the curly hair and you already had all the hair and stuff, baby, I had to take it back to the house. I would have did my own hair. Because now I'm scared. My trip is tomorrow. It's the June 20th and my trip is on the 21st tomorrow. So... I'm, I'm starting to panic, but I'm like, no, it's okay. Like, trying to calm myself down. It's good. It's good, Terry. You're going to be good. So, <laughs> she replies, y'all, three minutes later after that. And she says, no, sorry. I ran into a situation. I will be returning your deposit back now. Sorry for your inconvenience. Y'all. I wanted to cry. I was sitting in my car, like, reading this message. Like, hold up, let me read it one more time just to make sure I'm seeing this correctly. Sis canceled, okay? So it's like, so was you ever pulling up shortly? You was Probably never not. pulling up shortly because what inconvenience could you possibly have ran into if you was pulling up? There's no inconvenience. Yeah. You're here already. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? So I'm, I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, y'all. <laughs> I didn't know what I was gonna do. My hair was out. I don't have the type of hair where you could just wear your own real hair and go. No, I don't have that. So I'm panicking. And again, I'm gonna be in the water and stuff like that. So it was just a mess. She goes, I said, so I'm I'm still trying to stay calm because you just never know. Right. I say, do you happen to have anything later? This girl has the audacity, y'all, to send me my deposit back. So you're not going to respond to my question? Hello? I will say that I do appreciate that she did at least, at the very least, send your deposit back because she's not really known for doing that, um, even when she's in the wrong, without um, some kind of, like, riffraff ahead of it. So I do get it. I do understand, like your time was wasted we're not going to negate that but i hate to say at least you got your deposit back but at least you got your deposit back because some of these people don't even be trying to do that do you have an appointment later <laughs> she goes and then i so she responds she sends me the 25 dollars back she don't even answer my question i says i'm traveling tomorrow and don't have a hairstyle for my birthday or do you have any last minute recommendations she replies and say no sorry i don't okay so number one, you canceled my appointment. I scheduled this appointment with you a almost month ago. a month in mm -hmm. advance. You canceled my appointment, number one. And then number two, I asked you if you have recommend. So you're a hairstylist and you're telling me that you're the only hairstylist that you know? No, she has like people she could have sent you to, but she doesn't have like a network of people because she's very, um, she's not the easiest to get along with. I just said it like that. So I don't think it was that. I don't think it was that she didn't like want to. Um, I just think that there was nobody that she gets along with well enough to send to that does what you want it done. A lie. All hairstylists know somebody that they recommend you to. So the fact that she told me, nah, sorry, I don't. I was like, okay, all right, cool cool i was so tempted y'all to make a youtube video exposing this hairstylist or putting a post on instagram exposing her but honestly i'm not that type of person and i don't have that type of time on my hands and i'm just above that that i was just like whatever so i literally cried in my car and called my boyfriend and started telling him the story and 
immediately we started looking for stylists and the the conclusion of the story y'all is basically that i end up going with a sew-in leave out because that was the only person we could find available it was still cute i'm gonna put a picture right here yeah, it was still cute but yes. it's still not what i wanted so i was like half happy half not like happy that i found somebody to do my hair yeah, but sad but that i didn't get to do the vacation. style that Why i really it? really wanted and to this day i still haven't had that style and i really really want it so yeah y'all that is the story about how i had a trash hairstylist in la who canceled my okay y'all well that's the end of that and i need to go get these kids but i will say this um there are still some of us out there that are great. There are still some of us out there that care. There are still some of us out there that do everything, provide everything, and won't cancel on you same day unless there's actually really an emergency. This is why I preach about being very transparent with um, your clients and letting your clients know, like, you don't necessarily have to tell your business, but like, for instance, there was, um, on Halloween, my babies had a parade. Um, my clients, my clients are all aware that I have children. And my baby's parade ran a little further, but um, longer than I thought it was going to. And I ended up actually getting home in time, but I wasn't sure if I was going to. And so I made sure that I texted my client like an hour ahead and said, hey, is it okay if I push you back 30 minutes? My babies are having a parade and it's running a little longer than expected. And I just don't want to have you outside waiting. And she was like, yeah, sure. No problem. I'll go get a Starbucks or something. I'll see you at 1130. It's that simple. You don't got to tell everything. But a lot of the time... Um, Hairstylists are always complaining about how, oh, clients forget that we're human. But sometimes we forget to go show clients our human side, and we forget to show consideration and care for their time. Um, and I feel like that's kind of a thing that's lacking in all industries, but I'm definitely noticing a lot here at home. I'm not by any stretch of the imagination perfect, you know, but I am a person that is actively working to do and be better for my clients and my business. And I do listen to these things. So this is part of the reason why I wanted to do a reaction in the first place. Um, like I said, if you guys have any more videos that you want to send me, or if there's anything that you guys want my two cents or my opinion on, any hair videos you want to see, please leave it in the comments below and let me know you guys' two cents. Um, like I said, I will link the video um, in the description and I'm actually going to reach out to her um, and let her know that I did a reaction because I don't play with people's content like that. But I appreciate you guys for watching. I pray you guys all have a beautiful and blessed Friday, Junior, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.